Hi, I'm Alitia Acharya. I'm currently 18 years old and I go to Columbia University. So my name is Karun. I'm currently 18 years old and studying at MIT. My name is Asil. Um, I am 17 years old and I'm a first year student at Harvard. Yeah, so the NARAD project is an organization that's working to reduce water poverty and to increase access to water. And so we do it through three main ways. We do it through research, advocacy, and policy work. So firstly is the NARAD research which we've developed, which is a method to detect microbial contaminants in water using AI processing. So it's basically a device that you can directly integrate into water systems and it'll just automatically check the water, keep track of the water quality so that as soon as you see a contaminant arise, it'll flag local authorities so you're really aware of what's going on in the water system and you can really prevent the spread of contamination through an entire community. XJackMD, the project that I developed, is a technology solution for radiologists and doctors in hospitals. It's an AI algorithm that can diagnose COVID and pneumonia from chest x-rays. So let's say you're a radiologist, right? You're going to the hospital and you have a patient who's sick. You give them an x-ray and you run, you take a picture on your phone of that x-ray and this app, this program that I developed will actually diagnose what the patient has from the picture. And it's very accurate and it'll give you a pretty clear diagnosis whether it's COVID or pneumonia. In my project, I basically um, invented um, and kind of tested, experimentally tested um, different versions of a mosquito larvicide. Now, larvicide is basically just a, um, a substance. In my case, it was um, essential oils encapsulated in yeast cells. Um, that basically kills mosquito larvae um, while they're still in their juvenile stages before they become adults that are able to um, fly around. Early 2020, my mom got pneumonia and it was a big concern for my family and I because she went to you know many doctors and over a course of around three weeks, she was thrown around with different diagnoses. While while this was happening, while these misdiagnoses were were coming, you know, her disease was progressing, and eventually it was way too close for comfort for me. I had a lot of trust in the healthcare system, and in a way, it was broken on that day when I saw this, because I realized that radiology is not perfect. Diagnosis in the healthcare system is not perfect. And at that point, I knew I wanted to do something to, to fix it. Well, on a family trip to India, I saw the glaring water gap. There was a lack of access to clean water, and despite the precautions my family and I took, I still fell ill from drinking this water. And so when I returned home, I found that this was a global issue that affected nations, both that were developing, that were developed, you know, 2.1 billion people across the world lack access to clean water and an estimated one out of three drinks from such severely contaminated water that they are at severe risk for waterborne disease. And because the current solutions just are up to par, they're either too expensive or inaccurate, um, or they really only identify contamination once it's really spread and strong, I kind of wanted to take a different approach. Beginning of high school, I was really interested in debate, more so because the debate activity that I had at my school, I was able to explore um, diverse issues. But something that stood out to me the most was the inaccessibility of healthcare. And specifically, it's interesting to see how like different healthcare issues can be experienced differently in different areas of the world. I basically first just started off like in my school lab, trying different ratios of the oil, different amounts of yeast. I collected them from outside during my initial stages of testing. Um, and I would have like big liter bottles in my room filled with like these larvae and I'd bring the larvicide that I'd make in school 
to home and then like test it. Initial prototype was basically just software. Um, there was nothing physical going on. And then from there, I started to kind of like add in components, research ways in which you could have information be transmitted, research ways to take images of water samples. So that's kind of step one is considering scope and considering the skills that you have to be able to be applied to the solution. Um, I think the second point is really just pushing yourself to be as creative as possible. For me, it meant diving into the weeds of machine learning. Machine learning, it, it seems like this huge, you know, daunting program, this daunting, you know, clouded, um, like computer science thing. It's really pretty simple. All the machine is doing is using an algorithm to determine the difference between the x-rays and then make a prediction. And so it's all just teaching a computer to almost like guess, but in an educated manner. I would say to anybody, you know, on the other side of this video, who's thinking about a solution or is passionate about a problem, you wanna identify the problem that you're passionate about, do some research about it and see where in that area can you make a difference then work on brainstorming a solution for it and finally work until you actually are able to solve the problem.